donation day on the vault. Just kind of out of my spot here. What are you doing? I'm coming. I'm coming. Just working my just way over. Just work your way in. Just make sure the hair is just right. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously a primary concern. Dude, your hair is so long. <laughs> so long. Uh -huh. You know what I thought was funny though? Yeah. If oh. you keep, wait, wait. If you just never cut your hair again, right. or let's see how long we can go. No trim, no fanciness, just let it go. Then we, we can track the age of our distillery from your hair. <laughs> because the grand opening day was when we shaved your head. For how long? So this, our distillery, someone says, how old is your distillery? I'll go, that That's old. <laughs> uh, this is why we do donation day. The whiskeys that we have coming up. Because you can't get any of these. Yeah, most likely not. These are, from what Daniel was telling me, I don't even know what they are, but he's saying so these are obscure and hard to get and hard to find, yeah? Yeah. Okay, what's the first? Okay, this is from Brandon. Egbert. Brandon Egbert, you magnificent bastard. This is Taos, New Mexico. Yeah. I have friends that go there every year to uh, ski. Now, all we know is this is batch D. Bottle, I can't read the writing because it's washed off. Taos Lightning. And date April 2, 2016. Taos Lightning. On the nose, I like it. This is a revival. Wow, that's sweet and spicy at the same time. Sweet and, but it's, it feels like a relatively low proof. It does, it vanishes really quickly. Yeah. So this is a revival of a whiskey dating back to the early 1800s. 45%. A brand, anyway. Yeah, 45, it's in the 40s. 45% alcohol, and so, uh, honestly, you say spicy? I'm not getting the classic Rice spice notes. No. Definitely not black licorice or anise that I typically get. I'm thinking more of like the sweet spices, the cinnamons, the cardamons. Okay. The, right? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So not Spice quite, encompasses a lot of categories. Not rice spicy. So it's probably an unfair descriptor. Not rice spicy that right. you'd get from just that, that specific flavor, but more of cinnamon, I can find that, sure. Mm -hmm. Cardamom, I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I have no reference for cardamom. I'd probably know it if you put it under my nose. And then, again, that nose is a bit more floral than I would expect from anything called a rye. So here's what I'd tell you. I would gladly hang out at this distillery and drink both their bourbon and their rye because they're both good. Yeah, I like it. I wish I knew more about where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. But they're releasing really good whiskey. It's unfortunate that the bottle issue, unless it got ripped off somewhere, I don't know, that the bottle doesn't have us very clear about what's going on in here, otherwise we could talk more about it. But Brandon, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. What's the next one? Next one is... Hold on, let me fix my hair. So, I think this whiskey is one of the coolest stories ever, and it's what I wish more people would do. I love everything about the story. Yep. I really, really hope it tastes good. Oh, Oklahoma, right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Oklahoma. Oklahoma boy right here. So here's the story is that Hunter Stone Gamble yeah. who traveled the world as an educator in China and all over the place. Hunter Stone Gamble. Right. Is the master distiller rectifier. It was his dream to open a distillery. Right. Uh, with a is partnership this, is with this, friends. Is this from a guy? Actually, there's two different stories in this lineup that I desperately hope they're good. Is this from a person? This is from a person. This is, let's pour it first. Hang on a second. This is we so I can have whiskey in my bastard. bastard after the pour? Yeah. This is from Jared Gibbs. Post pour bastard. Jared Gibbs, you magnificent bastard. So this is a guy who got together with friends, family and friends, yeah. and started a distillery in Oklahoma, right. and uh, he's making everything. Oh, nice. Now, oh. I think. Okay. This is once again. Oh, I get that. Well, that, maybe not. I get that dusty antique wood note. I really don't know, but he says they're distilling 100% Oklahoma grains. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Now, these guys say they're doing a climate-controlled warehouse. Kind of hard to read that. Unchill filtered. It's 47.5%. Mm-hmm. Superlative blended whiskey. I don't know what that means. What is Oh, this is a rectifier series. Says, so they are sourcing whiskey, selecting barrels. Right. So it says rectifier select right on the damn yeah. label. Yeah. Right on the lid. Right here. It's huge. We couldn't wait until 2022, so they selected specific barrels from other distilleries. 2022. And then they create batch blends. Okay. Each one is unique. Uh, they don't tell us which batch we have. Uh, oh, here you go. Batch one. It's at the top. Oh, nice. Batch nice. one. That's kind of cool. Okay. 
So on uh, the nose, well done. On the nose, I get that dusty antique wood note. Yeah, there's a little bit of sweetness. This smells a little bit like Eleanor. Uh, I think this is more of a dusty antique wood. This smells like the new Eleanors we just got in and the, waited until the one, three. So the ones that haven't been haven't sitting, aged in Texas. They haven't aged in Texas. Yeah, I could see directionally a lot of similarities there. So on the taste though, it switches it up. It's a different animal. Yes, it doesn't taste like Eleanor. I will tell you, he says they're using a uh, warehouse where they're changing the climate of the warehouse over and over to try to replicate 24 seasons every two years. Interesting. Hot, cold, hot, cold. So they're cold. trying to really get it in and out of that wood. Yeah. Ah. But by using climate control. I, now, I, I what wonder, I would say is... I wonder how intensely hot or cold they can get this area. What I would say is I'll bet they're getting a lot of loss. Yeah. Which makes it kind of a bold decision, right? Because there's a lot. There's probably going to be a lot more evaporation when you do that. And your angel share is going to go up. And it's not a forty percent mm -mm. wheat tea kind of deal. It's forty-seven point five. So I have a feeling Hunter Stone Gamble is our kind of people. You can't have a name like Hunter Stone Gamble and <laughs> not be a badass. Yeah. <laughs> it sort of reminds you of like the old guys used to go exploring in like Teddy Roosevelt's right. era. Like he shows up to a jungle, he pushes a leaf aside, right. and they and they say something, and he goes, "I am Hunter Stone Gamble." Right. It's like the pioneer <laughs> or the explorer version of, yeah. of James Bond. The name, yeah. Gamble. Hunter Stone Gamble. Hunter Stone. Gamble. I kind of, I'm kind of <laughs> feeling dissatisfied with the name Daniel Whittington all of a sudden. To me, it's just a eucalyptusy black tea bourbon. Black tea, and then the first sip, I had a swell of maraschino cherry, mm -hmm. and then it landed with some. Caramel sweetness, mm -hmm. and then you just killed it. I just killed it. He's ready to move on. No, it's really good. Yeah, I'm excited because I was expecting both these to be meh. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm gonna pour you this one because I don't want to have to finish with this one. The, here's the real question: uh, Do we pour this one? Uh, because no. because Andrew Sutherland, who we've already bastarded twice this week, okay, he donated this one. Huh? But then what did he say just below it? Sorry about this one. <laughs> it's an apple cider flavored whiskey. So is it still technically a whiskey? Yeah, it's an apple cider flavored whiskey. Have we done flavored whiskeys before? No. This is the first flavored whiskey. I think, well, we did some as a no, joke. No, we, we did some like... We've done some in, pumpkin in, spice type yeah, of Yeah, we've deal. given to people, so... Okay, yeah, well, technically... It's donation day. Okay, this is what donation day's for. Right so, here. Rex, you... Yes. Are gonna take one for the team. I don't know, man. You, you, don't, I don't, hate don't apple say cider. the words take one for the team and then handle a bottle that shape and size. Relax, it'll make it easier. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. So <laughs> my body is prepared. I really dislike apple cider, so I'm not touching that. Man, so the apple is, is there, but it's not an overbearingly sugary apple. It's more of a sour. Yeah, this by the way is coming from, while you try it, Mississippi River Distilling Company. This is seasonal spirit number 11, bottle 1713, handcrafted in Iowa, LeClaire, Iowa, mm -hmm. stone fence. Can I, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, what do you think? On the nose, this isn't, worst case scenario, it's not a sugary apple cider well, bomb. That's good. It has the, the apple character that seems on the nose nicely balanced with some whiskey elements there. Okay. We'll go for the taste here. Did they go for 35%? So not even it's technically. It's not even technically whiskey. It's, it's a flavored product. Really thick. Very, very sweet. Wow. There's so this is bomb. rye. Cody Road rye. Oh, we have Cody Road rye. <laughs> we have the rye that goes into this. So this is almost more apple juice than whiskey. Okay. That, the sweetness Totally lands. I'm on gonna it. do you a favor and give you a new glass. Okay, the total the sweetness totally uh, Lands on the taste there way more than on the nose the nose maybe feel if you like ah, oh, there's gonna be some character some apple flavors balanced with the whiskey it's just wham Apple juice with a little dose of whiskey in there. Okay. This is one. I really was kind of excited to try is this that's Bernard Mulligan Bernard Mulligan Dude, people have such good names the the Bernard Mulligan. Bernard Mulligan, you magnificent So this better be good. Old line. Because this is one of my favorite stories that we've done on a craft distillery. Cask strength. Yeah. Nice. These two guys, they came from the Navy, flying 
jets off of aircraft carriers. Okay, right on. They became buddies. Right. They decided they wanted to start a distillery. This is this is uh, top, this is Top Gun. Here. This is Top Gun, right? You can be my wingman anytime. Goose. So they realize as they start trying to build a distillery in Baltimore, Maryland, that it's going to be harder than they thought it was going to be. So while they are working on distilling. They make friends with another couple of dudes from Middle West Spirits okay. in Columbus, Ohio, Ryan and Brady. Wow, I'm, okay. And Ryan and Brady and them, they get along so well, they decide, you know what? We are going to source our malt. But we're not going to source it from all these big conglomerates. We're going to source it from another craft distillery. Right on. And they became close friends. And uh, Ryan and Brady from Middle West Spirits helped create all of the malt according to their recipes mm -hmm. that they were hoping to later create in their own distillery. That kind of partnership is what American craft spirits should be about always. I'm just saying. On the nose. This is, for me, coffee and molasses. Oh, I love the nose it's on this. very dense, very rich coffee and molasses for me. This is only aged one year. And, oh, shut your filthy. No, look. You, no, no, look. You filthy. One year. Filthy man. In small American white oak casks. And this was further north? This was, like, not even It's a, Well, it's either in Maryland or Ohio. It's going to be in the Midwest or the East. That's pretty cool climate up there. Right. That is really dark for one freaking year. And look, they name no, their on. partnership hold with on. Middle West. Hold on. Hold on. Is it one year because they put the youngest thing in here was one year and they sourced some stuff that was older? I don't know. Okay, they could have done that. They could have done that, but this smells so good. This is coffee and ice cream. Ice cream? See, I get a little, I get molasses. And then there's like this really, this is going to sound weird, a really lovely stale bread note. <gasps> yes. Yeah. On the note. I did not get that until just now. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Son of a <laughs> nice. That's really nice. This is reminding me of a halfway point being some between some of the Midwest malts I've tried right. and the Northwest malts we've tried. Let me say this. Westland, so on. The level of density and yes. richness. Yes. If you're not prepared for a cast strength whiskey, this you, this could put you on your heels. Yeah, this is sixty percent. Yeah, Th this but I'm man, the, more. the flavors are so strong and so lively, but not sharp. No, no, it no. doesn't feel like a sixty percent whiskey. This with, is fudge with the alcohol. It feels like sixty percent with just the the bigness of those flavors there. This is the fudge of the malt oh, whiskey yeah. world. Yeah, it's rich and heavy almost. Added a little water to mine. Do you want to yeah. try that? And now I'm wait, gonna... wait. Let me try it first. Brown sugar for days, man. Sugar. Son of a Mark and Arch and Ryan and Brady, you guys did God's work. Because <laughs> if this doesn't compete with every one of the American single malts that I love, yeah, yeah. This is up there. And um, so you know what pisses me off? This is what pisses me <clears> off. <throat> one year? One year! How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure there has to be. Older whiskeys that they're putting in. I here. don't know. It's man. just there's something that's one year old that they put in, and they're limited to that as the age statement. I don't know, but it's really freaking good. I hope you guys are a part of the single malt whiskey American single malt whiskey group, right? Because there needs to be categories for things like this. I added a dash of water. Mm -hmm. It's still nice. It's still interesting. If you can handle it at cask strength, though, keep it at cask. It's a lovely dramatic adventure. Okay, we're moving on. Bernard, dude, this has been pound for pound a good whiskey day. Yeah, well, you skipped the apple. <laughs> it really. I'm like, just pretending like that didn't happen. If you like apple juice and whiskey, that could be amazing for you. Plus, I'm riding a motorcycle today, so I have to sit in my office for like the next couple of hours until my blood alcohol level drops below 0.01. Because mm. I don't ride. In, if I hit 0.01 or higher, I don't ride. So this is the very last one. This is a long day, man. I hope you guys really like our donation days. That well, he, I'm sure it's frustrating because whenever we go and on, you and can't on about get something, them. Any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's good prop. There's bound to be pockets of people who are close, local, who can find these things. So every once in a while, you may find uh, a little, a little diamond in the rough in your area. Which, yeah. You know what today's theme is? Cool names. Oh really? Rory Winget. 
Rory Wingett. Yes, that's okay. a cool name. All right, Rory Wingett. Rory Wingett, you magnificent bastard. Dang it, what do you mean? Sucks. Rex Williams, those are boring names. Yeah. They're antique names. It's like Williams is the most, like, one of the most. Top 10, definitely. That's because William the Maybe Conqueror. Maybe even the top five. Most that's because William names, the Conqueror. Most common names. Owned there. so many people, and you're one of them. You're a descendant of one of them. Basically, your name is proof that your family lost a battle. <laughs> 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 that's, that's totally true. Because uh -huh. you're Williams. That's funny. <laughs> you're, you're a funny man. <laughs> Despite what everybody else says. You're yeah, including my own children. A funny man. Actually, my boys think I'm hilarious. Yeah, okay. They really had no chance. So this was this took some weird research. Okay, this is definitely lighter on the proof here. I mean, way, 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 40%, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this is a weird story. Well, and 80, 80 proof, 40%. I'm not sure we're gonna like this. Yeah, here's, there's some people that get confused by that. Most reviewers often bump that, jump back and forth between proof number and percentage number, so. It's half. It, yeah, proof is half, or percentage, percentage is, is half, half of the proof. proof, so yeah. So, uh, Kane Lane, which is the company that makes this. Okay. Uh, they make a whole bunch of other spirits, rums and things like that. They're in Louisiana. Okay. They decided to do a bourbon-ish, so they got this whiskey distilled in Tennessee by a Tennessee whiskey distillery. I wish we would have saved the cast drink bad boy for last, because coming off the heels of something that rich and lively and intense, 60%, I'm, yeah. I'm struggling to find something. I stuff. know, I know. So they, they got a Tennessee whiskey distillery yeah. to distill a bourbon match, right? Yeah. And then they floated it on a boat down a river to Mississippi. Okay. And then they finished it in cognac. How long did they float, do we know? Well, I mean, how long is that journey? What, six weeks-ish on a boat? Sure. Um, so they got the, uh, they maybe got the, less. the agitation from the waves, Yeah. possibly direct sunlight, possibly heat. It's a thousand nautical miles. Oh, all right. Anyway, it's it's OMFW original Mississippi floated whiskey. So on the nose, this is not really a fair nosing, admittedly, because we just came off of that really intense cast strength uh, whiskey. But I'm struggling to find something beyond just the basic general common whiskey. In theory, this is five years old. That's insane to me. Because yes, this is a, definitely a lower proof whiskey, but the thing we just had. For that to be considered, we're not talking about it anymore. Just a one-year-old whiskey. I want to know. You bastards better watch this. Let me know how that is possibly one years old. So I'm gonna go right for the taste because I'm not finding a lot on the nose beyond just what you would expect from a standard. What I like about whiskey. this is it harkens back to the history of whiskey. Way, as a matter of fact, the way bourbon got its name. Mm -hmm. uh, some people in legend will say that it's because the barrels coming from Kentucky were labeled Bourbon County. Right. And they would make their way to New Orleans, which at the time, New Orleans was the center of the world in America. Mm. It was the most important commerce center for all of North America. And people would request that bourbon whiskey, the barrel of whiskey that stamped bourbon on it. Yeah. And that's part of the legend of where bourbon got its name. So this harkens back to a history of where whiskey was made yeah. and then shipped down the Mississippi River on boats to New Orleans. Okay. And I love that. I love that story. I went right for the for the taste there. It's a sugary sweetness that gives way to a light oakiness with a slight um, barrel, slight barrel bitter finish there. But none of those flavors are really aggressive or loud. Um, they're all pretty light. And you said this is an old whiskey, like it's it's years old. You said it's in theory it's at least five years old. Okay. All right. Yeah, man. Proof does. A lot. Here's what I will tell you. It, if you had to say, is it good or bad? It's a good whiskey. Yeah. Like this is good. I can't find anything that's offensive or wrong or weird. I'm struggling with. Right. It's just like, well, that's a really nice tasting whiskey. Nice tasting whiskey. It's very sweet. Uh, sugary sweet, and then it it lands. It ends up more dry than mm -hmm. it began. One more go. That's it. Yeah. Sugary sweet barrel. All right, what do you want to toast out with? What was your favorite of these five? Oh, come We've on. We've never done that before. Yeah, man, we gotta do the it's, thing. It's really gotta be the old line malt whiskey. We gotta whiskey. do the thing here. Yeah. We gotta do the thing. There's really no way around that. Sure, all right, okay. I'm just do a little, a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. 
Same amount for me. Okay. Cool. All right. You guys are awesome. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.